I was thinking about what to what would be the most useful for the the private group that's thinking all right about seriously about preparing to spend a couple minutes on and we we mentioned the the skills that people need to get uh, we mentioned ham radios being valuable to know how to operate uh, <clears throat> I guess with ham radios you're only able to talk to other people with <clears throat> excuse me with ham radios too right so that's right but there are thousands of those around the country and in every single city and rural area there's hundreds of people who have ham radios and not all of them will survive an EMP attack the ones that aren't plugged into antennas will uh, but ham radio operators are very savvy electronically they'll get their rigs or spare rigs online mm -hmm. you'll be able to talk to somebody and then with world band receivers you can not everything's going to be hit with an EMP attack, and you'll be able to talk to people around the world to give you news about what's happening in the U.S., even if all the news sources are down in our country. It's going to be very important to be able to talk to or listen to people around the world talk about this. So the ham radio network will be the new news network in that situation, right? Yes, uh, and there are certain repeaters all over the United States. I don't know how many of those are going to survive EMP, frankly. So you might have to wait for those to, you know, come right. back up with, with new equipment. But having a world band receiver and a long range antenna, which is just a big long wire outside your attic or something, you can hear around the world from places that won't be subject to an EMP strike. Okay. I'm very critical. I know in, in Los Angeles during the, the recent, I think, completely engineered directed en energy weapon triggered fires, uh, when they were planning to turn off the power in a test for urban areas to see what uh, leaving power off for a week or so would be like and what the social consequences would be. One of the things that they did preparing for that was turn off the repeaters. And I thought that was interesting, you know, in light of what you just said. Well, I think you're mistaking a, a report about California deciding not to use ham radio networks anymore in their emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. You, they can't actually turn off the repeaters because they have solar and battery power backup. And they most of the repeaters don't have any electrical lines going to them. So the state cannot turn them off. I thought there was something that prohibited or prevented no, people it doesn't with prohibit private things. California just said we're not going to integrate them, ham radio operators, as part of our emergency network anymore. But it, they're, still th they're still there. Okay. Do uh, you have any idea why they would do that? Well, they just want to discourage, you know, people from having an alternative to government information during a crisis. Right, exactly. But, but the ham radio is not going away. It's still going to be there. Okay, so as far as beginning the five-year period of possible grace period for preparation, the first thing is location, obviously. And I read your book, or, Strategic or, Relocation. Or an alternate location. Now, most people cannot leave the city where their jobs are right now. Yeah, exactly. You must prepare for an alternate location that's away from the, the massive urban areas. Is that the bug out idea? Yes, it is. And hopefully, if they subscribe to my World Affairs Brief, they'll get advance notice enough so they don't have to bug out with every all the other millions trying to leave the Yeah, uh, everybody bugging out at the same time would be a very ineffective bug out, I guess. You wouldn't That's get right. very far. That's right. You've okay. got to have advance information. You've got to be willing to leave earlier. You don't want to be, as Gary Norse says, on the last train out. So, um, for the people that want to subscribe to the World Affairs Brief, they can still get the free sample issue, right? Editor at worldaffairsbrief.com. That's correct, and it tells them how to subscribe. People can get sign up for a month, a trial issue, or a year, or two years. Uh, it's, uh, but they can always get that free sample issue by emailing me at editor at worldaffairsbrief.com. How are you allocating the type of subjects that you're covering now and uh, into this five-year period? Well, every brief has a preparation tip written by my son. The majority of the brief covers the world affairs and national affairs uh, as it's going on. Every week, the hottest stories I cover with an eye to what is what the conspiracy is doing that, it, that they aren't telling you. That's my specialty. Uh, but I'm talking a lot now about what, they've, what, what they're doing with Donald Trump, 
why Hillary Clinton's going to enter the election here, uh, mm -hmm. probably in a hung Democratic convention because of all of the candidates. Nobody will have a majority and she'll come in as the savior, I think. Yeah. But I'm talking a lot about do domestic affairs as well as the state of readiness of Russia and China, North Korea relative to the Third World War. And we'll talk about North Korea and the trigger for that war next time. Okay. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Joel.